it's a, it's a hard decision, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff Gold's with us as well, great criminal defense attorney. And that's kind of your sentiment in the sense that this isn't justice denied, it's justice delayed. And in the meantime, Joe DiGieri sits in a, in a jail cell, what, 23 hours a day with Sheriff Joe? Look, there is not one viewer out there that wants to spend one day in prison, one day in jail, where they tell you when to get up what to eat, when to go downstairs, when you can go outside, when you can see a visitor, when you have to go back to sleep again. It's ridiculous. It's not something that anybody should feel is unjust. Now, whether she gets the death penalty or not has not been decided. That's still on the table. She may get that. I'm not calling is that just or not whether she gets it, but there is no free ride for Jody Arias. She will be in jail for the rest of her life. Indeed. All right. Uh, Beth Karras, as we move forward and we head into a next a couple of rows in front of me, and, and they were crying and trying to console each other. Finally, one of the men said, we got to go. Let, let's get out of here. What did you see? Look, between you and Beth, you've got a pretty good picture. I was sitting, uh, rather than on the media side where I'd sit and sit most of the trial, I was on the other side where uh, Arias family sits and then the uh, public sits. And I got a very good view of that jury, and especially that juror, the black, the longer hair, dark hair, who was sobbing uncontrollably. And this is a hung jury it is very unusual for any of, the, of that to happen uh, so it was very dramatic and as Beth said too we were unprepared because we heard it was a question now we knew it might be hung but then the judge said we have a verdict so now we were all like what we have a verdict oh and then it went back to being hung again so it was that kind of emotion and I think that's where some of the emotion for the family came from first it was it was a question then they were sex speculating it was hung then it was a verdict and then it wasn't right. a verdict it, it was it's hard on the Alexander family yeah, very yeah. hard one of the things that a common sense observation I wish I'd have made at the time might have been more prepared you know Kleenex were laid out right in front of the Alexander family you'd figure if it was just a question you wouldn't need that but again you know there was so much to take in, in at that time and again thanks again everybody for sharing Beth Jeff you know just to give everybody to take you guys in, inside that courtroom we'll continue to do that here throughout the afternoon here on HLN and take your for Wilmot and her closing it was a part of her rebuttal closing as this trial wound down at least this phase of it do you kill her as she put her hands on Jody Arias' shoulder and asked the question one more time and many said that was a powerful moment as this trial wound down and that leads us to that question because uh, Jeff Goldback with us all right Jeff so get a new jury She's probably going to ask the same thing in just a, a different way, right? Well, it doesn't have to even be a different way. It's very effective, and it's not its not that original. That's what you do in a death penalty case, but it was great. She stood behind her. She held her. She touched her. She looked directly at the jury. Then she went over to the jury. She looked the jury in the eye and made them understand they would have to kill the client. So that was very effective. Okay, let's talk death penalty because, mm -hmm. some, you know, moving forward, someone said, okay, uh, and again, this is somewhat speculation of some kind of a deal coming down the pike. But let's say you get a thought of, okay, life, no parole. Let's just end this. Who would have to come up with that idea? Who has to approve it? What chain of command would have to get a hold of that idea? Well, first, the prosecutor has to make the offer. And if the prosecutor wants to make the offer, it goes to the defense, and they say yay or nay. Why would they say nay? They might say, we have a, an appeal. We would like this the whole, whole trial to come back. We want second degree. At the same time, that's why the state might offer it. You may know that in Philadelphia, the abortion doctor who was just convicted there of a, a, a number of murders was offered uh, life without parole in exchange for waiving all appeals and agreed to do it just this month. So that can happen. Okay. Would Travis Alexander's family have any kind of say? So would you yeah. go to them and say, you okay with this? In Arizona, they have a lot of say. In fact, Juan Martinez has no say. Uh, his boss has some say because it's a political decision by the county uh, attorney. And the victim's family has a lot to say about it. That how he was proud that they were able to hold it together because it was so powerful to hear from Stephen and Samantha, but how many days passed? Look, Mary's... I mean, you think he's, she's got a point? Mary's got an astute observation. Many times in this case, I've thought there have been continuances that were strategic. You know, some people have gone so far as to say migraines on purpose, etc. I don't know, but it's, it's a astute observation. I must say this. I'm speculating that that split between premeditated uh, and uh, felony murder versus just a premeditated murder, which was seven to five at the verdict, then became eight to four, and maybe it's the same general people, and almost nothing that happened in the mitigation mattered at all. Got it. So in, in, in essence, yeah. those seven said it, they're throwing the kitchen I'm sink just, at her. It's speculation, yeah. but those numbers right. are awful close. Right. Well, again, they're, they're, that's the split, and that's topic of discussion right there. Eight, four. What about that number four? High, low as you look at this? I'll take more of your calls. It's open mic, one eight seven seven. 
Again, that's the jury foreman speaking on Good Morning America. Back with us, great criminal defense attorney Jeff Gold. You know, a lot there to take in. So, but the first thing is, and part of it is our own intrigue in the case. How could this woman do something so brutal to this man, Travis Alexander? But do you take it as he's saying, you know, I just, I, I couldn't vote death for someone that looked like that. That's the bigger debatable topic well, here. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. Don't you see when he says that, that his mind was made up at the uh, at the at the offense part of the case, he said it didn't make sense. Well, okay, he voted for first degree murder, right. but still, that translated that no matter what was put in mitigation, what he remembered as the reason why he couldn't kill her is that it didn't make sense. So there was something about the offense itself, not the mitigation, just that there had to be something wrong. And look, you know what, Mike? Who do we kill in America? You kill multiple people, you kill police officers, you kill children, you have a long prior record. This is traditionally a very hard case for Juan Martinez to get a death penalty on. So the big victory was getting murder in the first degree. This has always been difficult to get. A young woman with one murder of an ex-boyfriend with a lot of sex talk to the death penalty. That's a hill, a mountain maybe, for Juan Martinez. You, you know, it, as we have covered this case, it was said at times, hey, if this defense team can just save her life, that's a victory. So are they riding a victory, at least at this point? It's not done, but not done. at this point? Not done, but we it's not death. That's number one. Number two, you're already talking, and so are other people. Will the county want to spend the money to do this all over again? It may be a political decision. Maybe they'll say, we don't want to, and then they will have it in the bucket. Although, maybe it'll be a deal. A deal might affect the appeal. So right. they're still winning because they haven't lost. Boy, you, you just hit on something there. The, the layers, and again, we're not sure. I mean, at this point, the state's saying they're pursuing this again. We're going to have another jury to go through the, the uh, penalty phase one more time. But if there's something in the works, how many layers? How many folks, you know, certainly Juan Martinez would weigh in. There's his boss, the Alexander family, and then Juan Martinez's boss could be an elected official that's got to be thinking about future, and are you going to be the one to either authorize a deal and not punish Jody Ari to the fullest extent of the law. There's a lot there, Jeff. I think if the Alexander family is not on board for a deal, there's no deal. Because I, politically, that won't sell. So there it may be go. for politics, but that won't sell. Look, Jody Arias, as it stands now, will die in prison. No matter what, she will die in prison because she got the death penalty and died in prison, or it's her natural life, she will die in prison. There is a misnomer that there's really parole, that whole thing about parole. Mike, didn't mean anything, because in Arizona, they've done away with parole, even though the statute says that she's going to die in prison, no matter what happens, as long as the case isn't overturned e on appeal. Even though that argument was playing out right. in court, because Jennifer Wilmot made sure she told that jury, if you say life, she's dying in prison. Juan Martinez tried to hint to that jury, wait a minute, that the judge could still isn't... give parole after 25 years. Right. Are yeah. they both right? Or well, no, just... Juan Martinez won to some experts yesterday who were here uh, to talk about that very thing, and they said, listen, the only way you could do it was a commendation. That there is no more parole. So in essence, she will never walk out of that prison unless an appeal overturned the trial and, and reversed Real it. Real quick, look at that shot of Juan Martinez. Mm -hmm. the look, what do you think's going on in his mind? What, where do you think, I bet he's ready to go back to work Monday on this. Uh, huh? <laughs> it, it may be, but he always knew, he always knew this was a tough one. Uh, and this has never been easy. The only aggravating factor, Mike, they had was cruel. They have a number of factors. The only one they had is cruel. The judge even said it wasn't heinous and depraved. It was just cruel. So, you know, there was a lot for the defense to work with, even though this was a, a high publicity case. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, 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 you know, press to it. But nevertheless, in America, a young woman killing a boyfriend after sex tapes and whatever else, very unusual to get the death penalty. All right, we're going to continue to follow. We'll take your calls on this. one eight seven seven tell hln is the number. Another case we're going to follow very closely, George Zimmerman. All right, again, such emotion in that courtroom. I was in there, Jeff Gold, you were in there with me as well, and so many others. All right, we, we, we know we're going to get emotion from Jody Arias, Travis Alexander's family. Juan Martinez was glaring a little smile from Jennifer Wilmot. But what about the judge? So her voice seemed to break up a little bit. Have you ever seen a judge that becomes... Uh, you know, and we don't know the feelings of Sherry Stevens, other than it was a hard case probably on everybody. Occasionally you do. You may remember the judge uh, with the uh, Anna Nicole... Uh, judge Cust Larry Seidlin. Yeah, I mean, you know, he had some emotion going there. It's it's rare. Uh, judge Sherry Stevens has been very calm, very rational, very measured. So that was very unusual what we saw that. And you saw Jody Arias talking frantically before the verdict with her lawyer, Jennifer Wilmot, which said to us, 
it was probably going to be something like hung because there was a lot of talking, a lot of talking, a yeah, lot of talking, a lot of talking. And that's why we were surprised when it was verdict, because that talking wouldn't be for a verdict. And, and that, to just to enlighten everybody, and I think you, you spent more days inside that courtroom than I did, but when I was Quite in there, she was active. Mm -hmm. Did you, I mean, was that daily where she'd come in there and she was with Jennifer Wilmot, with the mitigation specialist? I, I mean. think during the defense especially, uh, because that was all about her, and there were a lot of things that were happening quickly, were changing on the ground. After all, she had decided just in the middle of mitigation to have no mitigation. That was a big decision, and it involved her. Is she going to give a statement? Is she not going to give a statement? So I think it was especially clear that she was involved then, although she'd always been writing notes and whatever else. But uh, that last bit, when she was frantically talking before they announced this non-verdict verdict, gave away a little bit to us. You know, and just to let everybody know, there was times in this case, I know one time, and I read the articles in, in the Arizona paper, that Jody Arias was representing oh, herself. Oh, yeah. That we could have had the legal <laughs> showdown of Jody Arias versus Juan Martinez. Well, you know, that's the thing people ask me all the time. They say, would you represent Jody Arias? You're a criminal defense attorney. And, you know, I would, in a sense, but she'd have to be controllable because what's happened in this case is she's uncontrollable. She wants to control things. Look what she did with an interview 20 minutes after the verdict. No lawyer says okay to that. And then while a death penalty jury is out, deciding her fate, she gets four and a half hours or more <laughs> interviews. No lawyer is happy with a client that could have ruined five years worth of their work. Yeah, there was, it was even reported that there was loud voices between Jody Aries and her attorneys right before that post-verdict interview uh, with, with Troy Hayden. Again, so much here. Uh, Jody Aries, though, right now sits in Australia jail. That's Joe Arpaio's jail, and she's in a 7 by 11 cell 23 hours a day. So it's not like it's Club Med, but we know this. Not the death penalty at this point, and uh, I think the feeling for most is it's justice delayed, not justice denied. But what's the future hold for Jody Arias and this case? We'll talk about it and take your calls. You know the number, one eight seven seven. tell hln Welcome back. You're watching HLN News Now. Michael Anos along with criminal defense attorney Jeff Gold. And again, you, you got to feel for Travis Alexander's family at this point. So close to a conclusion to this, waiting five years. We're almost on the five-year anniversary of their brother Travis's death. Uh, they poured their heart out, waiting almost the five years to the jury and for all the world to hear, trying to repaint the image of their brother. And Stephen Alexander said in the victim impact statements, he wanted to go home and did not want to see his brother's murder again, yet now faces the prospect of coming back to Phoenix as this will continue because a jury of eight men and four women could not decide life or death for Jody Arias. We're taking your calls. one eight seven seven. tell hln is the number. V is with us in New York. Hey, V, what are your thoughts here? For someone on death row, it was 12 years before mm -hmm. in execution. Arizona. In Arizona, right? that's right. But, you know, first, Mike, she's, you know, it may be that, it, that more people are disappointed because there was no verdict at all. That it was a non-verdict. They just wanted closure. And if the jury would have been unanimous and said life, okay, life. Death, okay, death. This fact that they couldn't decide, maybe they didn't do their job. They didn't argue enough. They didn't try to convince each other enough to get a unanimous verdict. A lot of people are disappointed, and maybe secretly the Alexanders, if it was just over, it would be a little sigh of relief. Exactly. Secretly, and, maybe. And but. by getting that early note that we cannot come to a unanimous decision, does that tell you the heels were dug in Absolutely. very early? That's, uh, I'm, and, and I've been saying all day that I think they might have been dug in at the end of the, the, the criminal case itself, and that when they started this one, they knew they, what they were going to do. They'd been thinking about yeah. it for a long time, said they couldn't kill them, and it was 7 to 5 and then 8 to 4, very similar votes, and 